Hello students, what's happening today? Today is rainy day in Kolkata. So let's start with the introduction of mine. Myself, Anup Sa from Kolkata. And uh, today I'm going to introduce a topic uh, to derive an expression for the radius, Bohr's atomic radius. So let's start. Uh, we know very well that in atom, the positive charge remains at the center and the negative charge that is electrons revolves around the nucleus in a certain orbit okay this is orbit okay and here uh, the charge at the center will be equal to the ZE where Z is the atomic number that is equal to number of proton and it is equal to number of electron when the atom is in neutral state okay so <coughs> and e is the electronic charge again i have assumed that the m represent the mass of electron e represent the charge on electron r that is radius of the orbit and v is the velocity of electron in that orbit okay so if it is moving in a circular part there must be a centripetal force acting on it and this centripetal force is provided by the electrostatic force between these two charges one at the center that is positive charge and one at the orbit where the electron is moving okay so <coughs> centripetal force let us suppose this is fc centripetal force this must be equal to mv square divided by r okay and um, electrostatic force that is will be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught z e square divided by r square okay so these two forces must be equal to each other so again equating both equation we will get mb square divided by r is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 j d square divided by r square so this equation is very important equation and lots of numerical problems remains based on this equation so it must be remembered by the student next um, <coughs> if i if i'll try to find an expression for the v square what we'll get v square will be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Mm, z e square r will one r will cancel out so so this is the one by four pi epsilon zero z e square r r cancel out one r will remain and m will come over it so let us suppose this is equation one okay now again again from Bohr's atomic model that uh, we know that um, the angular momentum of the electron in the orbit is equal to the integral multiple of s divided by 2 y where s is the Planck constant this is the one of the postulates of the Bohr's atomic model so mvr is equal to mvr is equal to nh divided by 2 pi here n can be any number 1 2 3 1 2 3 etc okay this is the linear momentum mv when it is multiplied by the radius it will give us a angular momentum and this is equal to the nh divided by 2 pi so here <coughs> uh, if i am squaring both sides we will get m square v square r square is equal to n square h square 4 pi square okay so v square will be equal to n square h square 4 pi square into 1 by m square r square this m square and r square will uh, go to the denominator side 
so let us suppose this is equation 2 this equation 1 and this equation 2 uh, must be equal to each other because their left hand sides are equal so so One by four pi epsilon naught j d square m r must be equal to n square h square four pi square one by m r square r square. So I have to just make an arrangement, make a re I just have to rearrange it. So 4 pi epsilon naught will go to that side 4 pi epsilon naught okay that's okay 1m will cancel this 1m and 1r will cancel this 1r so there will be 1r present in the denominator side when it will go to this side we will get the expression for the radius so r n square h square will remain Z e square will come to the denominator side. Okay. So one m will remain over here. Four pi epsilon naught. Z e square is coming downward. Four pi epsilon is coming upward. One uh, m will cancel out. One m will remain where r will drop and this is 4 pi square and this expression will also remain in the denominator side 4 pi square so this is an expression for the radius of the electron in the nth orbit okay and from equation we are finding that here r is proportional to the n square that is r is proportional to the n square so R1 that is the first orbit is must is proportional R2 is to R3 must be proportional to 1 square is to 2 square is to 3 square that is 1 is to 4 is to 9 and similarly <coughs> and other orbits other radius in between R and R2 are not permissible let us suppose uh, the case of hydrogen in which the Z is equal to 1 okay and uh, the expression will be like this 4 pi epsilon naught n square h square 4 pi square m j m e square so putting this value that is m is equal to mass of the electron that m is equal to 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg okay as that is the Planck constant 6.62 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and other value we will get that r is will be equal to n square into 0 0.53 understand so for first orbit that is r1 we will get the value of radius of the first orbit of the hydrogen this is for the second orbit R2. We will put the value 2 square. 2 square means 4. 4 into 0 0.53 on the strum. This is equal to 2.12 on the strum. So this is the first orbit. This is the second orbit. And in between these two, or two orbits, there is no any permissible radius in which the electron will remain, in which the electron will revolve. So, this is the expression for the radius of the electron, radius of the orbit in the hydrogen like atom. Okay, and uh, the proper expression is this one with the value of z included okay
thank you for watching this video and um, if you like you could share it with your friends so that they will also get benefited from this video thank you again